We're here for this Learn with a Naturalist series that's uh, hosted by Sonoma State University, my alma mater and the Center for Environmental Inquiry. And we're gonna have an introduction from Carrie, who is the uh, Executive Director Outreach Lead. That is that what we call you? <laughs> the Outreach Lead, yes. Definitely not the Executive Director. Okay, okay, <laughs> great. Well, why don't you just launch right in and say hello to our guests and tell us what we're going to do today and all about the uh, Center for Environmental Inquiry. Perfect. Gosh, I am so excited to see people from all over the world here. This is really exciting. Um, hopefully you're all clearly at the right spot. Learn with a naturalist, the value of field sketching. And this is led by your esteemed host, uh, Christine Elder. And I'm really excited to work with her because she has a lot of experience with things uh, online that are we, we are just now investigating for our spring series. Because usually these events with the Center for Environmental Inquiry are held on one of our preserves. So this is either our Osborne Preserve, which is on Sonoma Mountain in Pengrove, California, or at our Galbraith Preserve near Yorkville, and that's in Mendocino County. So during the shelter in place, we've been adjusting and pivoting to virtual, and we're just so excited to be able to reach you all today. That's something that we couldn't actually do um, in our normal program. So um, before I let Christine just take this whole thing away, um, I want to tell you a little bit about what the Center for Environmental Inquiry is and how we can be a resource to you, no matter if you're affiliated with Sonoma State University or not. Um, you can be a student or parent, a government employee, an educator, a member of the public, or maybe you work with an organization that is in need of environmental solutions, which is what we specialize in. So what the center does, we envision a North Bay working together to find sustainable solutions. And we invite you to get environmentally ready with us. That is what my shirt says. Uh, so we're really happy to work reach this worldwide audience as well. Um, and the way we're doing all this is we're building a community of learners and problem solvers, both at SSU and in the community across all sectors of society, not just the sectors you might traditionally think of like environmental science and biology for nature. So we really wanna build this firsthand understanding of our connection with the environment. And we're doing this by giving you skill building experiences that result in sustainable solutions. There's so many ways to get involved. So just a few of them are, you can engage in research and that doesn't necessarily mean field biology. You can do all sorts of research, including um, art research and photography and all sorts of other activities. Um, you can be a part of one of our training programs. We have a naturalist and land management training program. If you're a student, we have jobs and internships. You can attend events like these or partner with us on events like these. So if you have ideas about leading something or if you'd like to see something led, please let us know. We have data that you can access, um, or we have projects, real world projects that you can partner with us on. So the point is that all of you are very important in addressing what we consider the greatest environmental challenges in history. So we want you all involved, all motivated, and we're so thankful that you're here today. So today we are going to focus in on how nature sketching and journaling can help us address environmental challenges. So namely by bringing these practices into your field studies and your pedagogy. So Christine joins us from Oregon, where she aims to help people for, form more meaningful connections with the natural world through a variety of outlets, which I'll let her go into if she wants. Um, but quickly, let me just tell you how the event's going to be structured. So this is one of our learn with a naturalist events. So that means the format's a little more relaxed and you'll be taking home a skill with you. Christine will talk about her practice and its benefits and then lead us all through some fun sketching exercises. I hope you've all brought your books and, <laughs> and your pencils. Um, and then we'll have some time for you to share your work and ask some questions before we wrap up. So only Christine is going to be audible and, and seen this whole time, um, but she'll turn your video on and audio on as needed when you share. So the chat function is really the way to stay connected to everybody today. So feel free and send any chats you need. I can try and address questions while she's talking or she can get to them when she has time. Um, and that is, that is everything I need to say. And I'm gonna turn it over to Christine and with a big one more thank you. Okay, Carrie, thank you. Well, so I'm going to shut off your video there. And if you want to uh, chime in, you can chime in in the chat box. Yeah, so I know you want to focus on watching and participating. So I won't make you be on screen here. But you do have a beautiful garden there. And it looks like it's nice weather down there in Sonoma County. Okay, so bye. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, great. So we're going to get started here. <laughs> great. So anyway, so this is how we roll. Basically, we're going to go for about an hour. And if you're one of my audience that knows me already, you know, sometimes I can easily go for two hours, but we're going to really try to keep this right and tight and keep it at about an hour. And basically, our goals, as Carrie said, is, is just really informal. I'm just going to share with you some of my experience um, sketching and journaling and how it's helped me in both my personal life as well as um, for my students. And uh, there are some resources down below. If you look at the button, it says download reference photo here. Uh, that leads to my website. Um, hopefully you may have gotten the email I sent out this morning that also had a link to that, but don't worry if you didn't get that. It just has some extra resources. Um, it's got a more of a full length video demonstration of, um, some of my sketching techniques and philosophy. And, um, and it also has a downloadable image that you, um, could use today, or you can just watch, um, as we go along, just watching the screen. Um, and so, uh, basically I'm going to introduce some, the, the philosophy kind of, and some slides and show you, um, some pictures of, um, sketching, um, my examples from around the world, uh, and that kind of thing. And then we're going to, um, do a sketching exercise together at the end for like the last 15 minutes or so, then we're going to do some sharing. And so in the chat box, you can tell me if you want to share your screen and either show your artwork, or if you have a, an, a question for me or for Carrie, uh, we can bring Carrie back up here and then she'll uh, finish us out today. And, uh, uh, and in terms of the chat box, now I know not everybody uh, has access to that depending on your platform or whatever, but hopefully most of you do. I see a lot of you in the chat box there. So basically from here on out, the chat box is for um, answering questions that I ask you about today's activity or you asking me questions about today's activity, either the idea of field sketching or how to sketch or when we're doing our demonstration, um, you know, sketching there. Okay. And I know some of you guys are kids that follow me along my homeschooling programs. So um, let's try to keep the chat box just focused on um, these questions and answers. Okay, so I love your enthusiasm, but today is a little bit more focused on uh, outdoor educators and their students and that kind of thing, because I know that's who this audience is for Sonoma State University's um, Center for Environmental Inquiry. Okay, great. So anyway, yeah, so today's topic is the value of field sketching. <laughs> and so uh, again, that's me, Christine Elder. Now, um, uh, the reason I got um, into this uh, event today was because actually Sonoma State University is my alma mater. And I went there uh, for my undergraduate degree in um, biology. And let's see, do I have some more pictures? <laughs> no, not yet. So, um, so yeah, I loved going to school at Sonoma State. It's a wonderful university, really intimate, really beautiful. Um, I took classes there with um, Dr. Um, Sherman and Dr. Kelson and Dr. Kentz and a bunch of other people. And then I interned uh, at the Fairfield Osborne Preserve, like Carrie mentioned, a beautiful place up on the mountain. Um, also the California Marine Mammal Center and the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And I got all those cool uh, internships through being a student at Sonoma State. So I really loved my time there, getting a bachelor's there. Um, and uh, I went on later to go to Humboldt State for my master's degree. And then I got a degree in science illustration at um, uh, UC Santa Cruz, University of California at Santa Cruz. <laughs> so anyway, there's a little picture of me. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I loved nature and I loved art. And I always combined the two. And so it was really exciting. It was really exciting for me when I got to college to combine those two as well. At first, I was just studying biology. And then actually at Sonoma State University, I took my first class in biological illustration. And I could not believe it, my luck um, being able to combine those two. 
And so uh, it was really helpful for me because I had some learning difficulties and, you know, biology is a pretty intensive uh, subject. And so I learned the value early on and appreciated the value of the sketching process in, in um, applying it to my courses. So I drew everything. So I drew like here, you know, I drew all the parts of the bones in my mammalogy classes. I drew uh, everything that was under the microscope all the cells. Um, I drew just everything, all of my field classes, or I mean, sorry, my, um, my lab classes and all those dissections. You know, I would draw every part of the fetal pig and the dogfish shark, and it was really helpful. And so um, I really learned that keeping a journal where I really actively was in the moment, drawing what I saw and adding um, text and, and color coding to it really, really helped me learn. And so um, that's one reason I continued on with the sketching and incorporating in to all the different jobs I had as a field biologist and later on as an educator and nowadays as well. And so anyway, nowadays, um, I, you know, after Sonoma State University, I continued on with college and then I had um, jobs working in fo both formal education and informal education, working in the field, like with the Forest Service and the National Park Service. And then I went to um, uh, school for science illustration and uh, I did that as a, as a freelance scientific illustrator. But really my favorite thing to do is to work with students and educators and helping them to incorporate uh, sketching and journaling um, into their lives. And there's lots of ways we'll do that that we'll chat about. And um, I also wanted to ask you guys before we go too far, if you could put in the chat box, if you are indeed um, an educator, say say um, me, if you're an educator. So are you in um, outdoor ed, informal ed? Do you uh, teach at a, a biological field station? Uh, maybe uh, that kind of thing. Or do you teach at a regular school, like middle school or high school? Yeah, so Carrie and Sean and Jen and Claire, great, great. I love to know that special ed, excellent higher education, homeschooling parent. Now, a lot of parents are homeschooling now, and you're really realizing how much that takes. Good, Wendy, great. Okay, wonderful. Okay, it's wonderful to see. Um, Michelle, higher ed field ecology, wonderful. I'm really glad to see that. Okay, and then and, and so I also want to know how many of you have actually tried to incorporate sketching or journaling with your students. Say, um, say if you have, say yes, then we can separate it from the me's. <laughs> so if you have um, tried incorporating sketching and journaling with your students, say yes, you have. <laughs> good, good. Lots of yeses. Wonderful. Thank you. Good. Oh, this is wonderful to see all of you. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, lifelong learner. Entomology. Awesome. Okay, good. So anyway, yeah. So I um I love sketching and I love teaching. I do it uh, in person here in Oregon, as well as I have online classes. And I also take people on nature sketching vacations to exotic locations. <laughs> and uh, so I love to travel in Central America. I've been to everywhere from um, Peru to Borneo to Sicily to Alaska to Jamaica. And I just love traveling and sketching. So, um, anyway, so, you know, basically there is a very long history of, of field sketching and journaling, right? You know, it's not just a hobby that we invented yesterday. It's been used for uh, centuries, as long as, you know, we've had paper and pencils. Even 40,000 years ago, the cave paintings in Europe of the cave animals, that was basically the earliest nature journals, right? They were trying to um, tell each other what animals they could hunt and, and how to find them and that kind of thing. Right. And so, um, you know, since the great age of discovery of, of um, you know, people traveling the world in, in their vessels, 
and going to the new world, especially really long history of utilizing writing and drawing before there was photography and video and the web and everything. So of course, here's John Muir and Alexander von Humboldt and Audubon and Lewis and Clark. This illustration is from the Lewis and Clark expedition. So those folks used it as a tool. And that's what I want you guys to think about. Obviously, a lot of you guys have already tried that. And so that's wonderful that um, we want to think of it as a, um, a process for discovering more about our critters that we're studying. And so here's another gal that I really love because women don't get enough um, shout outs in this field or in the science field in general. Maria Sibylla Marion, who in the uh, I believe 1700s traveled on her own to the new world and uh, was out in the field with all the uh, scary animals discovering that um, animals uh, like the um, moths and butterflies uh, they're discovering their life cycle and knowing that the caterpillars um, were actually a different phase from the adult butterfly and moth, and they weren't actually a different species. And so she was, you know, an excellent example of the value of field sketching, getting out there, spending enough time in the field, observing and noticing things like life cycles that you never would have noticed. Okay. Yeah, it's great to see so many of you have incorporated that. So great. I don't I don't have to preach to the choir too much then. Okay. So yeah, who can benefit from a nature sketching practice then? Basically all of us, right? And it looks like a lot of you folks have either worked in um, informal outdoor ed or you've worked in middle school or high school or higher ed. And um, I used to be a high school biology teacher as well as a college biology teacher. And I always incorporated that drawing because I noticed right, you know, from the time I was a student, like I said, how useful it was to be able to really sink things into your mind. Because the longer you look at something, um, the more you will remember it. And you can even just, you know, take your paper, your drawing and throw it away. And it doesn't matter if you have drawn something, you will remember it forever. <laughs> so, so basically everybody, you know, can benefit from uh, a, a sketching observation. So of course, kids like you, um, you folks here. So kids, you know, nowadays kids are so used to just having information at their fingertips, not having to discover anything on their own, just looking it up on the internet and not having to uh, remember anything either. Everything is right there. And so for children, you know, if you are able to get children out in the field, living in the moment, being mindful, that is so valuable to them. And, you know, they get to uh, create something instead of just consuming. You know, we're all consumers and, it, you know, even the politicians call us consumers. We're not even people, right? And so, um, you know, we can't be identified as just the, what we consume. When we create something as um, either as an adults or kids, we can be so proud of that product right? We are creating something and that is um, giving us a lot of um, self-direction and motivation and pride. I know that for me, you know, if my house were burning down, the first thing I would do would, would be, uh, besides get my pets, would be to get my uh, field journals because they're so important to me and they really, uh, you know, represent a big chunk of my life. And so, you know, utilizing utilizing field sketching as a lot of you students are, and um, uh, professors and educators must know, it's really great because it utilizes, you know, um, different learning modalities. You've probably heard of people that learn aud auditory and, and um, that kind of thing. But adding sketching, you know, is really helpful for those who really can learn um, kinesthetically, you know, by doing something and visually by seeing something. I know for me, if I just hear something, like if I just hear a lecture, it literally goes in one ear and out the other. I've got to take notes. I've got to make sketches. And that's the only way it cements itself in my brain. So the more that you can do that with your students, you know, the better. And, um, you know, it really supports cross-curricular education, too, because when you're adding um, sketching and journaling in the field, you're not just doing, quote unquote, art. In fact, I don't even like people to think of it as art. Um, we, you are really 
you know, utilizing, uh, you know, writing skills and even math skills and uh, language skills, all of that that can be incorporated in. And again, you know, if you um, are uh, teaching uh, and learning either in the field or at a museum or lab like this, once you draw something, you never forget it. And it really helps you to, to learn all of those subjects, especially in biology too, like anatomy and physiology. And, and, and if you're sketching in the field, things like ecology and even evolution and behavior, right? Um, let's see, what do I do? And it, you know, it just gives you another, uh, tool trick in your tool bag to incorporate is, um, adding, adding the sketching in. And, um, I get so sad when people, you know, say, oh, I can't teach drawing cause I can't draw. Um, but you know, that that's really doing a disservice to everybody. And I want you just to think more again of the process um, and that the time spent looking at something is the the it, it's it's the, the icing on the cake is actually you know the drawing the real learning is in this time spent observing which you're going to be forced to do at a much longer length than you would if you were just looking at something or taking a snapshot right. I mean, can you Im imagine a teacher um, in, you know, grade school saying, oh, gee, you know, I don't really know how to the write alphabet letters. Uh, you know, I can't teach my students writing, right? <laughs> and that would be just ridiculous, right? Writing and reading and writing is a core skill. Uh, and so I like to think that, uh, you know, drawing uh, is, is, is a core skill as well. So let me see what else I was going to say about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I see lots of people in there incorporating. Yeah. Okay. Wendy, is it lagging for everyone or is it just me? I don't know. I don't know what you're lagging about. Um, sometimes it depends on your internet connection. So yeah. So there's so many values to getting out in the field and sketching. Of course, the physical uh, act of getting out and exercising is great. Um, the emotional, the psychological, especially nowadays with um, sheltering in place. I don't know how many of you are still uh, sheltering in place, but it would, um, you know, it's uh, even if you can only get in your backyard or look out the window, it's going to be really therapeutic for you to, to sit down and be in the moment and draw something. You're not thinking about the past. Uh, or worrying about the future or ruminating about anything else. Um, drawing is kind of like juggling or throwing pottery that um, if you think about anything else, you're going to, you're going to lose it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So being in the moment, slowing down mindfulness, having a sense of wonder and appreciation. Uh, and of course, you know, since Carrie was talking about uh, environmental problems, you know, when you are sketching, especially uh, keeping a journal over the long term uh, and going, maybe returning back to a certain spot, you might remember and notice things like climate change things like over, you know, like many people, uh, like those of you who might work at biological field stations. Tell me if you were some of the folks that were invited um, to this uh, event that work at biological field stations. Same me. Um, oh, yeah. Anne says, I signed out and back in again, and it helped. Okay, great. So if you worked uh, at a biological field station, same me. Great, great. Yeah, so um, I spent four years after uh, college um, in Colorado at the Rocky Mountain Biological uh, Lab, you might know of, that's over 100 years old, that's uh, at a um, at an old silver mining site. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, the folks there, like the um, uh, famous Billy Barr, you know, he kept track, as I believe still keeps track of this, things like the snowpack, and so keeping track of things like that in a journal, whether you're just writing or drawing is so useful, right? And um, you can also notice things like uh, if, you know, flowering phenology changes or if, you know, the time of um, certain birds migrating or if there's uh, invasive plants coming or going, that kind of thing, right? 
Good, lots of me's, good. I like to know that you guys are out in the biological field stations. Yeah, so hopefully you're incorporating that with your field students and with your um, research fellows and encouraging them to do that. Um, okay, good, good, good. So just, just some more uh, eye candy there. Okay, we gotta keep going. Okay, another thing you can do is to notice the unnoticed and underappreciated. So, you know, once you slow down and look at things, especially small things like this little tardigrade I had my students drawing the other day, it's amazing how much you can appreciate something, even something microscopic like this. Once you draw it, you notice how many legs it has and how many segments and its behavior and all that kind of thing. And just really taking the time to slow down and look. You know, you might uh, incorporate having, you know, binoculars or having a little hand lens, whatever helps you to extend your range of vision. Uh, and also using all of your senses. The journaling helps you because you can add not only what you see, but you can add notes about what you hear, what you smell, um, the textures and patterns in nature, all of that kind of thing. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to just um, have a few examples from my field sketchbooks because that's going to kind of remind me of some of the other values of nature sketching and also some of the ways you can incorporate it in the field. Now, a lot of things of mine are a little bit more detailed than just sketches, but so don't be put off by that. Some of them are more paintings, but it's kind of the idea that matters. Okay, let me just take a second and look at the um, chat box here. Okay, and let me see, look at the chat box. Good, okay, great. All right, good, great. We have 60 people here live, wonderful, okay. So if you came in a little bit late, we're just talking about <laughs> um, the value of field sketching and giving you some examples uh, of who can benefit and the reasons to do it. And then examples from my travels, because I've been lucky to travel the world as part of my work as a, a nature tour guide. And also just because I love to travel and I love to sketch. And I also take people on uh, nature sketching and painting uh, holidays to places like in the Caribbean. Uh, so anyway, if you came in late, you can also uh, jo join the replay. It'll be available um, just a few moments after we're done and you can watch from the beginning. And also to remember that you can download reference photos at the link below where it says download reference photos here, which goes to my website, which is another place where um, you'll see a pop up where you can join and um, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I have some free things there, including weekly sketching tips and uh, a short mini course called sketching, uh, or what's it called? Stick figures to songbirds in 60 minutes <laughs> or something to that effect. Okay. So anyway, yeah, let me see. Um, and um, yeah, you saw that. Let me see. Wait, copy. Just, I'm just going to put that in the chat box in case for some reason you don't see it. But the link I just put in the chat box is um, the link to my um, downloadable reference photos that we'll use in a few minutes for our sketching session. And then also um, a, a video, uh, a, a bonus video on, on my uh, philosophy and kind of demonstrating a little bit more in depth um, my sketching philosophy. Okay. Okay, good, Carrie. Okay, yeah, all right, great. Okay, so anyway, yeah, so um, the value of sketching and what you can learn and, and what I learn in the field. Just a few slides and then we'll move on to our, our sketching activity where you'll just need a pencil and paper. Um, but even if you don't have anything, um, if you're not prepared, that's okay. Or if you are a little bit afraid to sketch, you can just watch and then maybe watch the replay again and follow along. So anyway, uh, field sketching is a great way for you to notice uh, similarities and differences within species. So, you know, whether you're a, a graduate student that's studying some rare species or whether you're a, a middle school kid or just a nature lover, um, that really helps. And especially for bird watchers, I'm kind of in the bird watching world. So a lot of my sketches uh, are, are um, birding uh, related. 
So um, sketching what you see, and it doesn't have to be finished like this, sketching and taking lots of notes can help you to look and notice the field marks because you know there's about 10,000 species of birds out there, so they can get con pretty confusing. And so if you spend the time, you know, whether you're a botanist or an entomologist or an ornithologist or just want to look at flowers, um, drawing them, no matter how symbolic that is, really will help you to notice the similarities and differences. So anyway, oh, oh sorry, here we go, slide there. Okay, so yeah, and um, you know, you don't have to draw pretty things. In fact, sometimes when you're teaching people uh, drawing and just starting to use sketching in your, um, in your classes, uh, you might just want to draw things that are maybe quote unquote ugly, like rocks. <laughs> and it's fun here. Just I was noticing um, the differences in a variety of rocks. And if you draw something that's kind of ugly, it takes a lot of the, um, uh, you don't get so intimidated, right? Compared to drawing something really pretty, like maybe your pet dog. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, I do a lot of field sketching and I bring a lot of materials with me, but you don't have to have this many materials <laughs> and um, you don't always have a long time to sketch something. In this case, I did. I sketched the rare pink headed warbler in the uh, mountains of Guatemala uh, because it just happened to be breeding season and they were hanging out there for quite a while. Um, here's some, kind of another example of, of comparing different things and different things that aren't necessarily thought of as pretty. Um, so that can take a lot of um, the pressure off you. Again, I know a lot of folks uh, hesitate to incorporate nature sketching and journaling, well, and especially sketching and painting into their environmental activities because they're afraid um, that they can't do it. And really, again, it's more the process and not the product I like to focus on. And uh, here's another example of just drawing things, quote unquote, that are ugly, like um, old rocks and driftwood and a, a dead insect and a, and a piece of bone, all of which I find fascinating. <laughs> And um, and so, you know, you can study things while you're drawing. You can, um, you know, look at various colors, really, uh, um, um, what do you say, uh, enlarging your vocabulary around describing colors and textures and patterns, which are important not only from the artist's perspective, but also, you know, as a naturalist or if you're a graduate student, maybe you're a student, you know, at Sonoma State University or maybe you're a student at one of these um, biological field stations. And um, if you're, you know, getting your graduate degree or studying your PhD, it doesn't matter. Um, adding sketches to your notes is really gonna help you discover things that you might not have, not have discovered. <laughs> Gwen says she likes rocks, good. And uh, here again, just looking at various colors and really learning how to describe them. Like yellow isn't just yellow, it could be lemon. Green could be you know, sap green or camouflage green. Um, or olive green, that kind of thing. And you know, your sketches can be quite uh, simple too. They, they can be more diagrammatic um, and they can just be a very simple uh, wash of color and an ink or pencil outline. So you don't have to be intimidated and thinking that you need to make your drawings look like the drawings you might see in a field guide that you might be carrying around, right? Uh, it can be much more simple. And, you know, it's a chance for you to notice things like down here. I think you can see my pointer uh, noticing that um, a leaf has been eaten by some sort of insect. And it's sometimes it's not until you slow down and really notice those things that you start to ask yourself questions like, oh, I wonder what kind of insect ate that and why I was eating it. And what season of year is this that it is? And is that same, you know, bug or caterpillar or um, gall insect on a different nearby species or does it only uh, attack one species? Those are all, you know, interesting ecological questions to ponder, whether you're an educator or student or scientist. <laughs> And again, here it's just, you know, comparing uh, species uh, in the field, <laughs> not so much that they're similar species, but looking at the whole uh, e ecology or diversity uh, in your backyard, like these guys where I live in Central Oregon. 
And of course, you know, you can uh, look at other things as well. Natural phenomenon. It can't, doesn't have to be just plants or animals. Uh, here in Oregon, a few years ago, we had the total eclipse of the sun, which was so cool. And I drew it every few moments. And, you know, this is very just diagrammatic, but it does the job. And it really helped me to think about and study and appreciate um, this uh, phenomenon. And once when I was in Guatemala just a few years ago, a volcano was going off right when we were sketching and everyone else was looking at the birds and I was noticing, hey, guys, there's a volcano going off. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, we are quite a, far away from it. So, uh, you know, think in the broader picture, not just plants and animals, but, uh, you know, weather and other um, geological phenomenon. Elaine says, have I drawn ravens? Not so much, actually. That's one bird I have. I've, I've drawn one or two ravens, maybe. Um, yeah, and so, you know, you've seen a few different examples of different media I've been using. So here's some actually pictures from my students of a sort of shaded pencil. So you can, you know, be really open to what medium you use in the field. Half the time, I just use a mechanical pencil and a clipboard and paper. It doesn't have to be uh, difficult. Uh, and remember, you can always add lots of notes. Here I was in Borneo drawing uh, what's called a flying lemur or a kalugo, which is this cute little animal in its own order and its own family. And so I was taking lots of notes on their behavior. So, you know, that's a good way for you to kind of get into journaling with your with yourself and your students is um, starting off by writing. <laughs> And here I am in Peru, just looking a lot at behavior of a huge flock of these Franklin gulls on the coast of Peru near Lima. Uh, there's actually some really beautiful uh, little towns you can get away um, from the big city only half hour away. So here I was looking at lots of critters through the scope, um, the spotting scope and, and, the, um, and my binoculars and really looking at behaviors and noting things. So, um, oh yeah, and here's where you can also look at something over time. So again, as a teacher or a student, you can have uh, people notice something over uh, a few weeks like this uh, lily opening. Uh, and so that's an interesting thing to think about. What else? Uh, here, you know, I can, again, kind of studying just one species. Here I was just using a colored pencil and then I added a little bit of gouache to one of them. And these sketches were all done live in just like 10 minutes. So, you know, it really uh, benefits you to get out there in the field with your, with your sketchbook, no matter what materials you use or how long you have. <laughs> and here uh, I was down at uh, last fall down in Monterey Bay and watching the sea lions and they were really fun and pretty lazy. So it was pretty easy to draw them. They were sitting on a, 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 a wharf <laughs> at Moss Landing. <laughs> and here I just used a couple colors of colored pencils to give it some more three dimensional form. So it really doesn't take a lot of materials. And uh you know, some examples, again, is where you can just use a lot more writing and that's a way for you to get into it uh, and you don't have to do a lot of sketching. So, yeah, you know, a lot of educators are afraid of facing that blank page, but you've seen some examples here. Uh, it's not that hard if you can just start. <laughs> and as I said, it can be very simple, just outlines, all of that kind of thing. Uh, you can just use pens or pencils, and uh, but you can just really keep your materials quite simple. Half the time, I'm just using a mechanical pen, like this blue one here. And, uh, you know, they can just fit in a little container, like this little waterproof bag, where I have a little couple pencils and pens, uh, a little tiny watercolor set that I made for myself and it all fits in this waterproof bag that's only about six inches long and three inches high. So it doesn't have to be um, difficult. But like I said before, if you're working with a lot of students maybe and you can't even you know, uh, afford this kind of thing, uh, it's easy just to take a clipboard and Xerox paper and a mechanical pencil out in the field. Again, it's more the um, activity than anything else doing 
um, instead of, um, inst you know, being a creator instead of a consumer is the important part. Okay, so now moving on, a couple things I have noticed, um, have mentioned before, you know, one of my big mantras is valuing the process over the product. So really, you're learning as you go, valuing the progress in your skills over perfection. And these, so the more you practice, um, the, the progress in both your artistic skills and your observational skills will improve. You know, again, we don't have a lot of observation skills a lot of the time because we're just used to seeing something, um, you know, like if you're a parent or an educator, how many times have you had, you know, a little kid ask you, hey, what's that? And as soon as you say, oh, that's uh, a California poppy or that's uh, a blue jay or anything, they run off to the next thing, right? As soon as you've named something, you know, our brains are like, okay, we know everything about it. Moving on. And so we really want to focus on our observation skills. And lastly, drawing as a tool for understanding. And that's where I want you to focus is not thinking of this as art, pretending to put on, you know, your little cap of the field naturalist, pretending you're Maria Sibylla Marion or John James Audubon, Muir, Lewis and Clark. Alexander von Humboldt, all of those early field biologists who used their pencils and journals as tools for learning and didn't get sidetracked or, um, you know, scared of the of the blank page because that's the only way they could communicate. They didn't have a uh, TV and radio and internet and uh, all that kind of thing. Video. Okay, and so I just want to get back up here say hi, just a sec, we're almost ready to start sketching. And so I know some of you um, are um, my current students in my other programs. And then some of you, especially those folks, uh, your field biologists, uh, you haven't met me before maybe. So we're gonna, um, in a moment, I'm gonna show you a pre-recorded video and I'm going to have you kind of follow along while I narrate it live. But just a few things really quickly is you wanna try to keep your, um, pencil uh, light and loose. You want to keep it moving as if you're in the field. That's all of my all of my techniques I use are techniques um, that I'm where I'm pretending that we're in the field. So I'm not teaching you how to be a biological illustrator like I am or to spend 10 hours on a drawing that's going to be published, you know, in a in a you know manuscript. <laughs> um, you know, this is field sketching um, for its own sake. And so we want to pretend that what we're drawing is live and real and it might run away or fly away or it might wilt or that kind of thing. So I always teach really fast skills. So I want you to keep that pencil light and loose in your hand, almost so loose that it could almost fall out of your hand. Um, so we're not holding it really tight and low as if we were like learning how to draw the alphabet, you know, in first grade, right? Keep it light and loose. Keep that pencil moving, resisting the urge to erase all the time. Okay, so we're going to separate the creation from the editing phase. So the creation phase is, you know, when you're drawing and moving that pencil. And the editing phase is when you're going like this. So just like when you're writing, you know, um, you know, if you're a scientist or a student, you might have to write a paper. You're going to try to brainstorm at all your ideas first, right? You're going to do what's called green lighting, right? And where everything is good. We want to hear all of it. And that's kind of what I like you to think about when you're sketching is first just getting everything down there, all of your ideas down there, and then turning the pencil and um, or doing some erasing towards the end or at very separate uh, little um, times. Okay, and then glancing back and forth between your subject and your sketch frequently. So what I mean by that is it's really easy once we start a drawing to just be looking at our paper where we're drawing and forgetting to look up at our subject, whether it's a, uh, you know, whether it's a hummingbird at the feeder or whether it's a, a flower in the meadow. 
it's really easy for us to get into um, just observing our piece of paper. And we don't want to do that. We want to be sure we're drawing from direct observation in the field and not from our memory or from our imagination. That's a different kind of artwork. It's valuable. But this, again, we want to think of not as artwork, but as just one more way to um you know, to learn about our, our, our world and our natural subject, whether we're looking at, uh, you know, snow pack changing or, you know, pollinator diversity over a season or, you know, uh, erosion from a hillside over uh, a year or the effects of fire on a, on a um, wildflower meadow, you know, whatever that is, we're going to really want to be looking at our subject more than our paper. And then lastly, of course, have fun because, you know, if you're too worried about, you know, you're drawing on, on the paper, you know, that's very much a first world problem. And especially nowadays, we have so many real problems in the world. The least of your problems should be that you don't like your drawing and that you're afraid to draw. Okay. So I want to encourage you to be really bold and just go for it and have fun and really live in the moment. Right. Okay. And so um, one, one last thing to mention before we start sketching, and then we'll sketch for about 10 minutes, is that I have this uh, concept of my six-step roadmap to sketching success. Many of you who um, are my students already, like Pranjal and Kira, know this already. <laughs> you can probably memorize this, um, say this in your sleep. But for all of you folks that are new, I do have a whole course on my website, like I said, that you can access at the button below where it says download reference photos here. There'll be um, some pop-up invitation menus that ask you to uh, join. So that's my six steps, um, or my uh, stick figures to songbirds in 60 minutes. So basically I'm just having people think about these things as you draw and as we draw in a few minutes. So thinking about blocking in basic shapes, you know, thinking of it not as like a bird, but as circles, ovals, triangles, uh, thinking about proportions, you know, of one part to another. This is especially important if we're drawing something larger or smaller than real life, um, that what is one size, um, what is one part in relationship to the other. And then looking at the idea of angles and alignment. So what, what structures are aligned with others? Like here in this little robin, our, our bill is lined up with a big, fat, proud chest. <laughs> and the two legs are, are lined parallel to each other. And then negative shapes, that's um, the part that isn't your subject. And for me, um, that can be just as helpful. In fact, sometimes I have my students just draw um, the negative shape and pretend that that's the object and not the object itself. So that really helps. And then looking at angles. So like here, there's like a 90 degree angle between the bill and the chest, or here's a... Uh, uh, what, 45 degree angle between the uh, back toe and the leg. And then lastly, the idea of flow lines, which is just for you to think about how how your pencil mark would flow um, across your, your subject. Is that a very gentle flowing or is that an abrupt flowing? Um, like as if uh, your pencil was water uh, going across your subject, which was a boulder in a stream, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so any questions before we start with the sketching demo? I'm going to switch over here. Uh, we switch out of this is what we do. And then I go here. Just if there are any questions you want to ask right now is a good time before we get started. Okay, bring this over here. Okay, who's ready to start sketching with me? Say me. Carrie said these are already so helpful. Good, I'm glad. Okay, good, lots of comments. So again, if you don't have a pencil or paper, that's okay. Oh good, I do see lots of me's, wonderful. Now this image here that I have is the image that you can download on your website, but um, hopefully maybe you can just follow along here. You're not gonna have to see it really perfectly anyway. 
uh, because we're just going fast and loose um, as if we're in the field. And truthfully, you know, sometimes in the field, you can't see something really clearly. Like maybe it's a, you know, it's a robin that's sitting on a branch at the top of a tree. So you kind of have to get used to not seeing something perfectly clearly and just drawing what you can see. Um, and so, you know, that's different than if you were actually sitting, you know, in your, um, in your living room and looking at a seashell that you'd collected on a vacation. That's a different kind of a drawing, right? Okay. Everybody says me, me, me. And I have Joe that says moi, ah, vraiment, très bien. Okay. Okay, let's get going. So we're just gonna do a few of these. And then remember, if you go to my website, I have this video that's actually narrated. It's about, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes and it goes into a lot more depth. So I, this is just a taste for us to have a little bit of a drawing exercise, okay? So let's get going, let's go. Okay, so here we're gonna just move your pencil really lightly. So, there we go. So here I'm just kind of going around the edge of this leaf as if I was a little insect crawling along the edge of this nice little oak leaf. I don't have to be exactly too perfect because plants can be lots of different shapes and leaves depending on if they're young or old or getting lots of water or lots of sun, no big deal. You see, I'm not doing any erasing, just keep that pencil moving. Now I'm gonna look at the seashell. So again, no erasing, just light and loose, follow along, a nice oval here. Don't press down at all, just a nice oval first. Noticing the opening of the shell. Noticing the lines up top on the shell. Going a little darker. the inside edge of the shell, the outside opening. No erasing, just moving that pencil. <laughs> Mine's a little fat. Oh yeah, I got a little skinnier right there. <laughs> Again, we're just quickly demonstrating, just noticing. Moving that pencil. Okay, moving on to the orchid. <laughs> you can go back to these. Okay, just getting the center area there, getting some lines for the uh, Lee petals, the sepals and the petals. Again, no erasing. Light and loose. Keep that pencil moving. Don't get frustrated. I know I'm going fast. Looking back and forth. Keeping those eyes darting back and forth between your subject. Now you probably can't see this part very well at all, so don't get frustrated. That's okay. Uh, but that's the kind of the details of the uh, orchid flower there. And always looking back and forth, noticing uh, which petals are in front. Those actually are the petals as opposed to the sepals. And drawing a little bit darker. So as I go, I just keep moving. I don't erase because I pretend <laughs> this flower might wilt. And again, you probably can't see this little part of the, the uh, center part, but it looks like a little lady uh, holding her arms up with her skirt. <laughs> Okay, and we're just gonna do this one more because we're running out of time. This is the acorn, and I'm drawing it a little bit bigger, just two ovals for the two acorns and the little stem real quick, the two caps. 
Lots of acorns down in Sonoma County where some of you live. Lots of beautiful oak trees, black oaks, and live oaks. You can see I just go over things a few times. A little bit darker each time as I'm looking back and forth. Noticing those overlapping scales, which are really different on various oaks that you'll really notice once you draw them. You notice those scales. Every species of acorn has different shape of the nut and different overlapping scales. And again, some of these things you only notice once you draw them. So you see, I haven't done any erasing. <laughs> okay, we're just going to stop here because we're running out of time. Um, again, I'm. you can go to my website and at your leisure, follow along and watch this video. So now I'd like to invite folks up. What you want to do is say me in the chat box, and I'd love to have you up. You can either just show the sketch you might have started, no matter how loose it is, or if you have a question for me or for Carrie. Um, I can add Carrie back in here if I can find her. Um, there's Carrie. I'm going to add Carrie back in, and I'm going to see if anybody else wants to come in. Oh, somebody said you are only allowed so many repeats the word me. <laughs> okay, so say something else if you want to go up. <laughs> say I volunteer or something else. <laughs> um, okay, and I see some of my existing students want to go up, uh, but I'd really love to see somebody who is part of um, Sonoma State University's uh, crowd here because I know you guys haven't gotten a chance to ask me questions or share before. So maybe Lucinda or Kiyoko. Okay, I'm going to try Lucinda. Let's see if we can get Lucinda up here. I clicked invite and so you should see an invitation and hopefully your uh, audio and video will work. While the rest of you guys are waiting, you can keep working on your little sketch. Maybe even if you can't see the picture, you could just draw it or you could think of some questions. Oh, there's Carrie's. Let's see Carrie's. Uh, great. Well, you can share first. Do you have any questions or comments, Carrie? Um, the orchid was really hard because at one point I did something that I was like, I have to erase, but I can't. And so I ended up kind of going over it darker. Yeah. And doing my best, but um, the leaf was actually, it was really hard to start, but because you're going so quickly, I felt like each thing after that was easier and easier. It's just getting into that flow. So great, great. thank you for helping me get confidence with this more. Yeah, <laughs> and again, you know, it's not so much that uh, I discourage erasing because I don't want you to think it's not perfect or whatever. I just want you to pretend you're in the field and something might fly away at any moment and it's not gonna wait for you to erase things. Can okay. I say just a, a couple, like maybe one and a half minutes of things in case people have to leave at one o'clock? Okay, yeah, okay, great. Why don't you do that? And then we'll have other volunteers up and we won't be rushed. So and we will not else? rush. You can keep keep staying, everybody. Okay. Okay. I just want everyone to know, you know, one of the things that we're actually doing with these public events is creating an anthology of works that have come out of these events. So if anybody feels comfortable sharing some of the sketches that they've made, I would love it if you could email me those um, to include in that anthology to kind of show people the value of what these programs are, are allowing us to do. So if anybody wants to, I would be so happy. Um, I don't know if you have my email, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it and then also put it in the chat box. So it is, Winning K, that is W I N I N G E K at sonoma.edu. Uh, and I'll also type that in the chat box. So, just really quick before we get back to your sharing, I want to thank Christine wholeheartedly for this really incredible special event. Uh, and, and I hope everybody feels a little bit more empowered to use these skills and go out there and, and educate more and observe more. Um, and I know that I know that I am already. So it, it feel very thankful. Um, 
I do want you to e feel free to email me with any questions, comments, ideas. We're always looking for new ideas for events like this. If you happen to be someone who wants to lead an event like this, we do both virtual and in-person events eventually at our preserves. Um, and this is just one of two dozen, over two dozen events that we've done this spring virtually. Um, we only have one left coming up, but all of the past ones are recorded. So you can go to our website, which is cei.sonoma.edu slash calendar. I'll also put it in the chat um, to see all of our events and also to see our recordings. So to access the recordings, you just go to the past events page and at each event description, it's right there at the bottom. So just go to the event you're interested in and you'll see the recording for it. Um, now, our very last event is coming up two Mondays from now on June 22nd, and it's called Learn with a Naturalist Video Showcase Exploration. Uh, and what that is, is our education manager, Suzanne DeCourcy, and three student guests are coming to show us selected short video clips, very short, two to three minutes each, that were all filmed during the shelter in place on topics ranging from investigations of local plant species to becoming present in nature to how to explore the environment right outside your window. Um, and all these videos will be posted on our website, and this is kind of an introduction to those and an opportunity to ask the students who made these films about their experience as a naturalist or a land steward or an intern with our outreach program. Um, so you can register for those at the website at the, the calendar page. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you one more time. Feel free to spread the word far and wide because these virtual events, as you know, can reach anyone throughout the world. Um, and we just hope you all stay safe and hope to see you really soon at another event. So back to Christine. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Carrie, thanks for inviting me. And uh, yeah, again, if you guys want to keep working on your sketches with the video I have at the link below where it said download reference photo here, that's where I have a whole half hour video that continues uh, showing my sketching and a lot of other stuff. So um, if you want to continue that, or if you want to just use those techniques on another subject that you have at home for real, you know, then you, again, you can share those with Carrie and that would be really fun to have those as part of that, um, what do you call it, an anthology? That's right. Great, okay, so we'll um, shut Carrie out there so she doesn't have to be on screen. And if anybody else um, wants to get on and ask any other questions about the sketching exercise or field sketching in general or journaling or any questions for Carrie, she can answer those in the chat box, um, but she doesn't wanna keep being on the screen. So, and I don't have any questions yet, but uh, just thank you, Cheryl, and the few people that have um, said thank you to me. I really appreciate it. And um, I'll keep I'll keep answering in the chat if you want to do Good. it. Good. Yeah. Carrie added her email there so that we can do that. OK. Yeah. So let's see if anybody wants to share. Not um, not everybody's Internet works, but let me scroll here and see. I already tried inviting Lucinda and doesn't seem to. Kiyoko, let me click on you. So it just depends on the Internet connection speed and your browser and audio and video and all that, whether it will work. But I did click on, um, I clicked on Kyoto, Kyoko, Kyoko, sorry. And let me see, who else can I click on? Um, um, let's see. So we're gonna see if that works. And I know uh, Pranjal wants, to, I know Pranjal's works. So sometimes, sometimes the sharing doesn't work, but um, well, it just worked with Carrie. So I know Pranjal's will work uh, in general. So maybe he can come up and share. I invited Kiyoko, it says invited a few seconds ago. So sometimes it takes a minute. Okay, so you're welcome. Thank you for thanking us in the chat box. Thank you, Joe and Michelle. Thank you, Barbara and Wendy. And um, thank you, Claire and Cheryl. Good, good. Okay. Wow, well, we still have 43 people here. So Pranjal, I did click on you to bring you up. So I don't know. Yeah, hmm. it's interesting. Sometimes it doesn't work. It just worked with Carrie. So I don't know, let me see if I can uh, get you in. Oh yeah, yeah. So. People were invited up on screen. So anyway, 
We'll see. Sometimes it takes a minute. Kiyoko says, I keep clicking accept, but not getting through. Barbara wants to know how to donate to the Center for Environmental Inquiry. I don't know. Maybe, Carrie, you can tell us if uh, you do accept donations or not. Barbara would like to know. Hi. Oh, there we go. Hi, Pranjal. How are you today? I'm good. Great. What do you want to show us here? I know that was fast. Oops. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, we just lost. Oh, there he goes. So I hope you guys can see this a lot better. Yeah, yeah, a little bit closer and really still. Hold it closer, higher, and really still. Nice, great job. Any any questions or comments? And also today I did a cassowary. <gasps> wow, those are cool. You don't want to run into one of those in the field. <laughs> I know. And it's like try staying at a distance. Wow, great. <laughs> Good. Anything else? Um, I've been like sketching birds in their natural habitats these days. Good. They're in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I've done the toady here and then also the horned grebe. We used to see them in California. Oh, yeah, right. In fact, since you since you mentioned birds, I'm going to um, add a link in the chat box oh, to my so workshop well. tomorrow. Right. Hope you can come to the sparrows tomorrow, okay? Okay, let's see if anybody else can get online. Kyoko says, Thank nice you. job, Pranjal. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, anybody else want to come up? Yeah, so um, so I put in the chat box a workshop I'm doing tomorrow. Now that's for my students who are in one of my courses called Sketching Backyard Birds for Beginners. Um, but I'm inviting other people up. Uh, partly because of the uh, whole coronavirus shelter in place. And I know some people still are um, sheltering in place. <laughs> so that's that's free. It's tomorrow at noon. And it's all about the fam two families of quote unquote sparrows, old world and new world sparrows. And we'll do a much more detailed drawing of a bird. It might be a little challenging if you've never drawn a bird before, um, but you might want to just come anyway. Uh, my course is all about the kinds of birds you might see in your backyard. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can get Wendy up. I think, let's see, I'm going to click on Wendy. Elaine says, nice work, Pranjal. Eleanor is looking forward to tomorrow. Good. Elaine says, I hope to attend. Uh, you can also sign up for things and watch them, the replay. So you should just sign up anyway so that then you're reminded to watch the replay and you can just save that link maybe on your browser bar. Hi. There I am. There's Wendy. I thought I would show my seashell. Wow. Progress. Wow, you got a lot done and it's oh huge. <laughs> that's the only one I'm doing, that's why. Oh, okay. It is really good practice to draw things a different size than you see them. I often have my students draw something e either like twice as large or twice as small. And that really helps them if they're incorporating those six steps to sketching success. That really helps them to focus on those ideas. Cool. Thank you. Good. So I hope you will include uh, sketching as part of your studies and, and teaching. Yeah, I already do. But this is really good because you're giving me so many ideas of ways I can make the lesson that I give a lot better. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. And try to maybe sign up for my weekly tips. I have 52 weeks of weekly tips. Awesome. <laughs> I will. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi. Oh, great, it worked. Perfect. Hi, Kira. How are you today? Good. Um, I was about to start sketching the, I mean, drawing the, or, coloring the orchid, but it didn't happen, so. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you might want to find a better photo. That that photo of mine, the orchid was a little bit wilted at that point. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and many orchids that have that exact same structure. So you can get just about any picture, I think. Okay. Good. Okay, wonderful. Any questions or comments? Um, not that I can think of. Good. Well, go ahead and make sure you click on that link and you can watch the full video uh, and learn more. Okay. Audio with that too that explains. Okay. Okay, take care, Kira. Are you going to come tomorrow? Yep. Okay. Well, at least I'm going to try to. I don't know what's going to be Okay. Going. My parents yep. won't be here, so who knows? Next week I'm teaching also. Ooh, okay. Bamboo. We're doing bamboo Ooh. on Wednesday. Ooh. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so let me um, tell you one more thing since uh, we're going to just get going pretty soon. I want to um, invite you guys to one more thing because I just can't help myself. Uh, so I've been doing this series ever since we started sheltering in place here in Oregon. Um, and it's this live sketching series. And I'm just putting that in the chat box right now. Um, I am have done that for 12 weeks in a row, several times a week. Uh, and I'm on my 49th one. And that's going to be on bamboo. And it's uh, in the chat box if you want to join for free. It's next Wednesday. And I'm also doing another subject on Friday, which will be my 50th uh, in my series of um, learning about plants and animals of the world and how to sketch them. So that's uh, kind of similar format to this where I introduce basically, um, well, it's a little bit different because I introduce a plant or an animal, in this case, bamboo, which is a huge uh, group within the flowering plant families. And then um, I talk about its uh, ecology and diversity and show you lots of pictures of it. And then we do a sketching demo, which is much more detailed than today. Uh, and you have a, a sketching um, cheat sheet that you can download for, for that as well <laughs> on my website, which I haven't uploaded quite yet. But anyway, okay, so Pranjal says, yes, great. <sighs> Heather says, hooray, more sketching, right, yeah. So I'm doing one next Wednesday and one next Friday, which will be my 50th one. And then I am heading out of town because I've worked really hard and I deserve a break. And I need to go get inspired to, um, to do some of my own field sketching so that I can get re-inspired to teach you guys. Okay, okay, anybody else want to share? Pas Pasque, Pasque Nelson, what time is it? Uh, it's at noon Pacific, so noon here on the Pacific Coast, um, and um, a lot of a lot of my things are at noon because that's the most convenient time for me. So if you're someplace else in the world, you can watch the replay. Okay, so anybody else want to share their sketch or ask any questions before we get going? Because I did want to try to keep this nice and right and tight, like I said, um, around an hour since this is. Uh, co-produced with Sonoma State University, and you guys might have other real jobs to go back to <laughs> if you're uh, educators. So anybody else want to go or you just have a question for me? Yeah, the one on Friday is at noon as well. I almost always do noon. Okay, well, we've got just 32 people left. Everybody's saying goodbye. See you tomorrow, Gwen and Mary Ellen. Okay, wonderful. Again, don't forget to check out the, the link below where you can see the full video where I really go into more demonstration and audio about it. Okay, good. Okay, everybody's saying thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye, Eleanor. Bye-bye, Nancy. Um, yeah, Nancy, the center of the orchid is hard to see. Yeah, yeah, I, sh I probably shouldn't have done that orchid. But like I told Kira, um, you can look at just about any normal picture of an orchid online and it'll look similar inside, especially um, the Phalaenopsis genus. So they have a very similar structure in the center. Also, Nancy, if you remember, I did do a whole um, workshop on orchids and we talked a lot about their whole structures. So you could go back and look at that. And I included a lot of other um, images for you to look at. So those are better. Okay. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, everybody's leaving and so nobody else wants to share. Okay, well, I really wanted to um, thank uh, Carrie at the Center for Environmental Inquiry and Sonoma State University, uh, my alma mater. I loved going to school there, studying biology for my bachelor's degree. And I love my four years that I lived there in Sonoma County. And I'm going to be heading back through there in a couple of weeks. I can't wait. <laughs> I hope it's not too hot by the time I get there. <laughs> okay. And so thank you everyone for joining. And uh, I appreciate that. And, um, and take care. And again, finish some of these sketches and share them with Carrie so they can be part of the um, anthology of this whole series of um, online events that Sonoma State Center for Environmental Inquiry has done. Okay, well, I'm going to end the broadcast now and hope to see you guys uh, sometime in the future, either tomorrow, next week, or someday, somewhere. Okay, so take care. Have a good uh, morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye.